Have you ever wondered how the Portuguese cuisine evolved to its current glory? Portugal's gastronomic identity was largely shaped during the Age of Discoveries, a period of intense exploration and colonial expansion. This era brought a wealth of new spices and ingredients from far-flung colonies forever changing the taste of Portuguese food. Imagine the first time someone added a pinch of black pepper or a dash of cinnamon to a traditional stew, the explosion of flavors that must have ensued. This blend of the familiar and the exotic is what makes Portuguese cuisine so intriguing. Among the many dishes that emerged from this fusion of cultures, two stand out, bacalhau bras, a hearty codfish dish, and caldo verde, a comforting kale soup. These iconic dishes, born out of necessity and resourcefulness, have stood the test of time and continue to be beloved staples in any Portuguese meal. Now let's delve into the origins of these mouth-watering dishes. What makes bacalhau a bras an indispensable part of Portuguese cuisine? Well, let's dive into the fascinating tale of this much-loved dish. Originating from the bustling region of Bairro Alto in Lisbon, bacalhau a bras finds its roots in the humble taverns where it was first crafted. The name bacalhau a bras pays tribute to its creator, a tavern owner named Bras, whose culinary invention soon became a staple in Portuguese households. The heart of bacalhau a bras and indeed a significant part of Portuguese culture is codfish. Cod or bacalhau in Portuguese isn't just a fish in Portugal, it's a national obsession. For centuries, Portuguese fishermen have ventured into the icy waters of the North Atlantic, braving the elements to catch this treasured fish. It's then salted and dried, a preservation method that imparts a unique flavor, making it the star of many Portuguese dishes. Preparing bacalhau a bras is a labor of love that begins with soaking the salted cod overnight to remove the excess salt. The cod is then shredded into thin strips, ready to be transformed into something truly special. The magic of bacalhau a bras lies in its unique combination of ingredients. The shredded cod is sautéed with onions, infusing the fish with a sweetness that balances the salty tang. Next. Thinly chopped fried potatoes are added, lending a delightful crunch that contrasts with the soft, flaky texture of the cod. And then the dish is bound together with scrambled eggs, creating a beautiful golden medley. The eggs, lightly cooked, coat each ingredient, marrying the flavors and textures into a cohesive, mouth-watering dish. But the story of bacalhau a bras isn't complete without its finishing touches. A sprinkle of black olives adds a pop of color and a burst of briny flavor, while a scattering of fresh parsley lends a touch of freshness. With a sprinkle of black olives and parsley, bacalhau a bras is a dish that truly represents Portugal's culinary soul. This simple dish, born in a tavern, has journeyed through time and history to become a symbol of Portuguese cuisine, loved and savored by all. Ever heard of a soup that can bring a whole nation together? Meet caldo verde. Caldo verde, or green broth, is a heartening soup that has, over the centuries, become a culinary symbol of Portugal. It is a dish that perfectly epitomizes the simplicity and resourcefulness of Portuguese cooking. The ingredients are humble, potatoes, shredded collard greens, and chorizo. Yet, when combined, they create a delicious soup that is cherished in every corner of Portugal, from the bustling cities to the serene countryside. The origins of caldo verde can be traced back to the rural regions of northern Portugal. Here in the heartlands of the country, the farmers and peasants had to make do with what little they had. They cultivated potatoes and collard greens and they made their own chorizo. These were the ingredients they had in abundance and so they became the backbone of their culinary culture. The preparation of caldo verde is straightforward, reflecting the practicality of those who first cooked it. Potatoes are boiled and mashed to create a creamy base. The collard greens are shredded into thin, almost thread-like strips and added to the potato base. The soup is then garnished with slices of chorizo, adding a smoky flavor that contrasts beautifully with the mildness of the potatoes and greens. Over time, caldo verde has transcended its humble origins to become a staple in every Portuguese meal. It's served at family dinners, festive celebrations, and even late-night gatherings. It is a soup that unites, bringing together families and friends in a shared appreciation for the simple yet satisfying flavors of their homeland. Caldo Verde is more than just a soup. It is a testament to the resilience and resourcefulness of the Portuguese people. It embodies their ability to create something truly wonderful from the simplest of ingredients. 
It is a dish that tells a story, a story of a nation's love for food and their deep-rooted respect for the land that sustains them. A bowl of caldo verde is a comforting reminder of home for every Portuguese, no matter where they are in the world. What's a meal without a sweet ending? Enter Pastel de Nada, Portugal's beloved egg tart. In the heart of Lisbon, nestled within the ancient stone walls of monasteries, a sweet secret was being baked. The Pastel de Nata, a humble tart with a rich creamy custard filling encased in a crispy flaky pastry, was born from the creative hands of monks. In a time when egg whites were used for starching clothes, the leftover yolks became the perfect ingredient for this sweet delight. Now let's dive into the magic that creates this iconic dessert. The recipe, although simple in its ingredients, requires skill to perfect. It begins with the pastry, a delicate dance of dough and butter folded together to create the flaky, crispy shell that is the hallmark of a true pastel de nata. The filling, a golden custard, is a creamy concoction of egg yolks, sugar and cream. It's gently cooked until it reaches the perfect consistency, a balance between too runny and too firm. Once the custard is spooned into the pastry shells, the tarts are baked until they reach a beautiful golden brown color, with the custard slightly caramelized on top. But the pastel de nada isn't just a dessert, it's a symbol of Portuguese culture, a sweet memento of home for those far away. It's enjoyed at breakfast with a strong cup of coffee as a midday treat or as the perfect ending to a meal. And it's not just in Portugal where these sweet tarts have won hearts. From London to Shanghai, the pastel de nata has traveled, making its mark and delighting taste buds around the globe. Its universal appeal lies in its simplicity, a testament to the saying that the best things in life are often the simplest. So, the next time you find yourself in a Portuguese bakery, don't forget to try a pastel de nata. Let its creamy custard and flaky pastry transport you to the sun-drenched streets of Lisbon. Whether it's the savory bacalhau bras, the hearty caldo verde, or the sweet pastel de nata, Portuguese cuisine has a way of making you feel right at home. We've embarked on a culinary journey that took us through the heart of Portuguese cuisine. We started with the intriguing history of this diverse culinary landscape, a testament to Portugal's rich cultural tapestry. Then we delved into the tale of bacalhau bras, a dish that symbolizes the resourcefulness and creativity of the Portuguese people, a delicious blend of flavors that tells a story of the sea. We also visited the humble origins of caldo verde, the quintessential Portuguese soup, a simple yet hearty dish that speaks volumes about the country's agricultural roots. And who can forget the sweet conclusion with pastel de nata? These custard tarts are more than just a dessert, they are a piece of Portuguese history wrapped in a flaky pastry shell. The next time you're in Portugal, remember you're not just tasting food, you're tasting history. Until our next culinary adventure, bon appetit.